Hello, Peter Wood here, Greenwood Days, back in the garden for another short film. Today we're going to focus on axe work, um, something where we're going to take the piece that we cleft, this sort of thing, and just take the corners off and get it to this sort of shape, ready for doing some work with the draw knife while sitting on the shaving horse. So we're just going to go through the equipment we're going to use and then show you how to work the wood. Most important thing, or the two most important things, this is the first one, is the chopping block. Um, a simple piece of wood. This has got three branches with holes drilled into the bottom of the log at a nice angle so it's relatively stable. And you do want a stable base to do the axe work on. You don't want something that's rocking around all the time. So a nice wide angle on the legs and something that you can work. If you've got a big lump of wood, that's the correct height then that's fine as well but if you've only got short pieces of wood just make yourself three legs drill some holes and you've got your chopping block you want it to be the correct height for you um, in fact when I'm working in the woods I've usually got three or four different heights of chopping block so that if I'm working a longer piece of wood I can move to a lower chopping block so I'll keep a nice straight back and then when I'm using shorter pieces of wood then a higher chopping block so again, I still keep a nice stance and a nice straight back. Um, another tip is try and keep the top of your chopping block clean. Um, when you're not using it, a cardboard box, a wooden box, anything over the top of the chopping block and it stops any dust flying over and falling onto the chopping block. Because every time you bury the axe into a chopping block that's got dust in it, it starts chipping the blade and blunting the blade. So a nice clean surface and then when you're not using it just cover it up. The axe I'm going to use is a side axe I've used forever. Um, it's one I got from a little secondhand market again about 30 years ago when I first started. Um, nice long story about how I got it but I won't go into that. Um, but basically it's a side axe um, which means it's flat down one side and it's got only one bevel. Um, for me it means I can get the angle of my chop nice and straight up and it gives me a little bit more power but whatever axe you've got use that don't don't go buying new things just for doing a little bit of axing make sure it's nice and sharp you could have a double bevel you can have a single bevel I'm left-handed so on this hand obviously this one doesn't work in the right hand buy yourself a right-handed side axe but anything that will work and then I'll show you how to use it um, When I'm using this axe, I chop my hand right up close to the axe head. It's a weighty old thing, so I've got plenty of weight coming down. With other ones, you might bring it a bit further back down the handle, but you want to have control rather than power. So the closer the hand gets up to the axe head, the more control you've got. As you get a bit more used to using the axe, you can bring your hand a bit further back, so you've got a bit more power. But have control rather than power, first of all. Um, what next? Let's think. My stance, I'm going to be slightly to one side of the chopping block so that I can be swinging straight up and down. But then if I miss, it goes down the side of my body rather than axing this way and going into my body. Think safety. Think about an axe sharp going towards you. You want to be as safe as possible. Next little bit is warm your body up. It's quite a um, hard workout for your arm. So make sure you warm up all the joints before you start working. Um, it may look a bit silly, but after you've been doing half an hour's axing, your muscles will certainly feel it. The next thing is when you're bringing the axe down, when you let it drop straight down, don't bring it in this way. When I bring it in this way, all the weight of the axe head goes into the hand. So that weight, isn't going into the chop it's staying in the hand and I don't know if that makes sense but think about it this way if I'm going straight down the weight goes straight down into the wood if I'm coming in this way I get less weight going into the hip going into the cut and it's all in my hand so let it just drop straight down and do a bit of practice let it drop down let it drop down the other thing you're noticing is it probably gives a bit of a wobble when I hit the wood 
holding it tightish, but not so tight that the force of the hit goes up the side of my arm. Uh, what you don't want is a locked wrist. You're going up and down using your arm, but when you hit the wood, keep a hold, but let the force go into the hit rather than up your arm. I'll show you what I mean. If you just go straight up and down and hold it really tight, you can see that's not flexing, so all the force of the hit goes up your arm, and that really hurts your tendons and really hurts your elbow, and after a bit of time you can find yourself suffering from um, tennis elbow. So try and keep that wrist loose. So I'm dropping it in, and I'm holding it, I'm stopping the axe from moving around, but I'm allowing all the force into the work rather than up the arm, so be careful of that. The next thing is you can control how much you're taking off or how effective the cut is by angling your piece of wood. Um, so notice, well let's, let's start with this, if it's straight upright it's going to start, the, the, the axe is going to start missing the cut, so you bring it back a little bit. If you go too far it doesn't penetrate very far into the wood. Less effective. Bring it up a little bit and you can hear it slices, the cut is a lot more efficient and we can take a bit more off. So think about efficiency where you put the angle of the billet. Next thing is notice the billet is at the far side of the chopping block rather than this side. Um, this side, when, when you act, it's more chance of it swinging off and going into you. So bring it over to the opposite side. And finally, my hand is holding it at this side. My thumb is over on this side rather than holding it at the top like this. Obviously, if your axe is above your hand and comes down, there's a chance you might hit yourself. Bring it over this way. There's less chance of hitting your thumb on the rest of your hand. You don't want a bit of creep in your hand coming around. We're lucky with this piece. It's nice and long, so I can work the bottom half of the wood without getting anywhere near my hand. Um, if I'm turning, and I'm turning short pieces of wood, I would tend to cleave them in two lengths, axe it and draw knife it together, and then cut it in half. But anyway, let's do some axing. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get it down to a cylinder. Um, I've started axing, but you can see I've drawn on the end the cylinder and all we want to do is take off a large amount on the bark side and just a small amount on the inside of the wood. Um, you're just trying to get it to be an octagon or a hexagon, um, something that's relatively close to that cylinder that you want. So you don't need to be taking a lot off of some sides. So be aware, look and think about where you want to take the wood off. Don't just start axing and hope it ends up being a cylinder. So let's take the top corners off. So you can see I'm standing to one side. I'm letting the axe drop down. I'm letting the weight of the axe do the work. And you'll notice what I'm doing is feathering the wood. I'm taking a little bit off, working it up and then brushing off those chips. There we go. Might take a little bit off that side, not a lot. And then brushing it down. And then bury the axe back in the chopping block. Don't leave it loose. One, that's going to fall off and blunt. Two, you might brush your hands on there. So just tip it in there. And that begins to get you a rough cylinder. Once you've done one half, turn it over. Then you can concentrate on the second half. So we're going to keep on going. Feather up to about there. Brush off those feathers. Bring it up. You don't want to go any higher than that. Because if you think my axe is above my hand now. And so you just want to keep it well away from the hand that's holding the top of the wood. There we go, we'll take off a corner here. If you're only taking a little bit off, you can work from the top.
There we go. Might take the bark off on this one. Depends what you're doing with the wood, you might want to keep the bark on for effect. So let's just see. The other thing to watch out for is look how straight the piece of wood is, whether the grain runs straight the way down. If it starts curving off, then you have to start correcting that curve with the axe if you're going to be turning this with a nice straight billet. But that's roughly all I need to do with this. I could then go onto the shaven horse and do some draw knifing. Um, so that's um, an initial look at axe work. I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you next time out in the garden.